In this one, we're gonna be doing a very simple Docker container. Like we're gonna create the Docker image, we're gonna release a container, and then we're gonna work with it. Now, if you've never heard of Docker or haven't used it yet, um, this is gonna be a really good introduction for you because I'm just doing the absolute basics to show you the real benefit of it. And we'll, we'll talk about it as things happen. So there's a couple of requirements that I have to mention because, well, for you Windows users, if you don't have Windows 10 Professional, seriously, Professional is the one you need, um, you're not gonna be able to use Docker. You need to have virtual machine support. Um, Mac, you're in luck, you have that by default, and a lot of Linux users have it as well. Um, if you're a Linux user, there's a really good chance that you could just go through this blog post and get what you need done. So of course this blog post is here and once you go there you will have the most up-to-date information relating this simple Docker container and we'll put some links to other Docker type posts that we'll do in the future. Now a big part of the reason that you're going to want to do this is so that you can more easily deploy your applications. This could be web applications, it could be microservices, it could be machine learning applications. It, it like really just runs the gamut and Docker makes all of that stuff a lot more simple and a lot faster to do. The first steps of using Docker, I don't think are that hard, but um, I definitely avoided putting this into serious practice for a very long time. So let's go ahead and get started. First step, obviously you need to create a Docker Hub account Next step is to install the Docker desktop, and then you're gonna to wanna to log into those things. So when it's all said and done, you will go to Docker Hub, and you'll eventually download this, uh, and then you'll have something like this going. Now, I'm not gonna go over these things right now, um, so you can, you can kind of explore on your own, um, but after you do this, you're gonna go ahead and see this in the top right corner. If you're on Mac, and then if you're on Windows, it's gonna be in the dock on the bottom right. But in a similar fashion, right? You'll see something very much almost identical. In my case, mine says Docker desktop is running, Kubernetes is not running. We're not gonna cover Kubernetes just yet, um, so you don't have to worry if yours is running or not. Um, Kubernetes is awesome, so we will eventually get to that, but it puts Docker on a whole nother level. Um, so, assuming that it is running, I'm going to go ahead and verify this installation by opening up my terminal. And of course, if you're on Windows, you're going to use PowerShell. And all you want to do is just type out Docker. You can do version 2 and see what version I'm working on. That doesn't particularly matter that much as far as my experience with Docker. The things we're about to do haven't really changed for years. I don't think they're going to. They might improve a few processes here and there, but overall, this is some really basic Docker stuff. Okay, so now we need to go and actually place our first Docker file. What this is, is it's just a configuration file. It doesn't have to be called Docker file, but that is the convention, like everyone does it that way. So that's what we're gonna do too. And this part doesn't really matter where you put it. So you can put it on the desktop just for testing purposes if you want. Uh, I'm gonna put it into a folder that I typically use. It's called dev, just call it a dev folder. And I'm gonna make a directory called simple and docker. We're gonna CD into simple docker. And then we're gonna go ahead and touch this docker file. Okay. So what's in this docker file? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste one. So inside of this blog post, I can copy that and I can use nano if you're on Mac and paste this in. If you're on Windows, just open it up with the text editor and then you can, you can paste that stuff in too. But let's go line by line as to what's going on here. First and foremost, from Python 3.6, right? So what this means is it's gonna grab another Docker image. I'll talk about what a Docker image is in a second, but it's gonna grab another one called Python 3.6. And of course, this means I'm gonna be using Python version 3.6, but it gives me a whole other system altogether there. And this is made even more clear by this next column where it says run. 
This is using Linux commands to update my system-wide installs, right? So I'm, this Docker file is gonna create a new Linux machine on my Mac computer or on my Windows computer. And in fact, if I sent this Docker file to you and you ran it, it would work the exact same on your machine as it would on mine. That's one of the key cool things about it. But anyway, so these are some default installs. Um, there's a lot of things that you could put in here that I'm just not gonna cover right now, but like OpenCV would be a really cool one to have in here, or like TensorFlow, or TensorFlow with GPU support, and CUDA, and all of the things that you might need for machine learning. All of that stuff could be added in this Docker file itself. And then we can expose a port. So if you're familiar with Django, and you run the server on Django, you're gonna to wanna to have that support uh, for 8000, port 8000, because that's typically what you would have on that port. Um, of course, I'm just putting it in here to show you that you want to expose whatever that port is that you're gonna be running your application on. And then of course, the very last thing is where you actually run some sort of application. In this case, I'm just running a command called hello world. Not a big deal here, right? So that's it. That's the basis of building your very first Docker image. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it with Control X, Y, Enter. And we'll just do cat Docker file to make sure it was saved. Okay, and that's all of that data there. Cool. So this is also explained a little bit more on this uh, blog post. Uh, there's another thing that isn't in that Docker file, which is copy. Uh, copy will allow you to copy co code from any directory you want, and that will go into your Docker image as well. And again, I'll, I'll give you a distinction between image and container in just a little bit. So the next thing is we actually want to build our first Docker image. So the Docker image is something that I will be able to reuse over and over and over again. Every time I reuse it or every time I run it, that's called a container. So an image, when you run it, it turns into a container. Think of it like if I sent you an installation for Windows 10 Professional. I wish I was doing that. So then you Windows users could absolutely do this. But if I was sending you a thumb drive with that, that is a copy of the source image. So you'd be able to install it on your local system. Think of that as how those containers work. So containers are instances of an image. We'll see what that is in just a second. So anyways, back into where my Docker file is. Notice I have nothing else in here. I just have the Docker file because this is just what I wanna show you. I wanna build it with docker build and then you use dash t for a tag so you want to actually tag it some arbitrary name in my case i call it hello world and of course when i say arbitrary name i i certainly mean you want to name it so you'll remember what the name is um, because you might run this command a lot so you want to make sure that you remember what that name is next we declare what file for our docker file this is where you can name it something different, right? So if you called it Docker file uh, A or Docker file C or whatever, you could then distinguish that there. And then this trailing period is important because it's going to be using your current directory. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and copy that. And we paste in here and we hit enter. And here it goes. Okay, so yours will take a little bit longer because I've run some tests on this and Mine went super fast because I did those. Uh, so it's using my cache for Python 3.6 and all of the installations that I did. Finally, I exposed port 8000, and then it ran this command. Now, CMD, that is the last command. That's the last command I want this image to run when it turns into a container. So that is definitely where you're gonna wanna put your last command for running your web application, for example. Now, of course, you don't have to have a command there. It's just something that if you want it to be run, 
that would be the way to do it. Cool, and notice it says uh, that it successfully tagged hello world latest. That's pretty cool. So that means that, hey, this container is made and tagged. And this is now considered the latest version. Awesome. Okay, so there's a few commands that are also of note, right? So one of them being Docker images, right? So if we look at this, this lists out all of my images, okay? So hello world, the latest. This is one gig of data right now. I have no idea why it's so big, um, but that's how big that particular image is. The next is Python. Ah, here's why it's so big. The Python image itself is almost a gig itself. So it's 913 megabytes. Okay, so that one image is this. This is not an image that I created. This is one that it downloaded for me and my hello world image works off of that one, right? And then, yeah, you see a bunch of stuff that's related to Kubernetes. Don't worry if you don't have that. More than likely, you might just only have these two, right? So that's, again, Docker images. So after I ran build, this is where my image came. Cool. So um, the next thing is there's this one called Docker PS-A. So Docker PS, this is going to show me all of my actual containers that are running. So I'm going to go ahead and just do Docker. You're not going to see this, but I'm going to remove these for now. So you can see what I would imagine yours is if you're just now installing it. I don't have any containers running, right? I have images. Oops, not Docker's. I have images, but no actual containers running. Okay. So now we just need to run our container. So we have this image. This image could be reused a billion times, but until we actually run it, it, it won't do anything, right? So actually running it creates a container. Okay, so we can do docker run IT. This allows for the type of communication it needs. So just dash IT. And then our tag name, which ours was hello world. You know, I don't have to do dash T again, but just the name of it. And hit enter. And we see hello world. Cool. So what that just did was it ran that Docker file, this command right here, right? So if you were working off of a web application, it would be running that web application right now and it would keep running until you had canceled. And of course, the reason mine doesn't is because I didn't run a web location or something that will continue running until I cancel it. Cool. So again, we can look at the actual containers that are running with Docker PS A. And again, we see that my hello world image is running again with a container ID of, of this, right? So if I ran it again and again, so that's what, three times there, and I look again, there it is. It's running literally three times. So this is where sometimes I got frustrated when I was learning is I was like, hey, I would run it, and then I thought that I canceled it, and then it would still run. So you want to be aware of how you can actually remove these images or even stop them. So you can do Docker stop and then whatever container is running, right? So Docker stop, that, that literally just stops the container. It doesn't remove it, right? So if I do PS again, it's still in there, right? Uh, but it's, it's, it's stopped. So if it had a server running or it had a web application running, it would, it would be done. But I'm going to go ahead and remove them because you don't need these extra containers in here um, at any time, really, um, because you already have the image, right? So if you already have the image, you can just spin up another container at any time. Cool. So 
The next thing is actually going into a bash shell in this Docker image. So this is, I think, where a lot of you might see some real value to using Docker. Uh, so again, we use docker run dash it, and then the image name, in my case, hello world, and then I'm gonna do bin slash bash. So this is always the command, bin slash bash. Just remember that one. We hit enter. Now I'm actually in my system, my Linux system that's being run through Docker, right? So if I do pip freeze here, for example, um, I don't see anything, right? Versus I'm gonna open another terminal window and do pip freeze. I'm gonna see something. Now I know this because I have pip installed, I've worked with Python, but even if you haven't worked with this, this is showing me that it's, a, it's definitely an isolated environment, right? So another thing is if I do Python and then import OS, and we could do something like OS path, dot expand user with a little tilde there and hit enter. I see that it says root, right? So let's go ahead and open up another terminal window, uh, right? So I'm not inside of my Docker container and I run Python again, import OS, os.path dot expand user, little tilde, completely different, right? These are definitely different systems that just happen to be work, working on the exact same computer. And again, that's true if you're on Windows, that's true if you're on Linux, uh, it's gonna work identical. Now, this is, I think, one of the biggest and coolest things about Docker, is that you have now a Linux server, if you will, right here without doing a whole lot. I just installed Docker, I made that Docker file, I ran a build, and boom, now I have a Linux server. And I can use this over and over and over and over again, right? The other part of this is that since I have this, I can delete this Linux server, spin up a new one. Delete, 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 spin, spin, spin. And you can do it literally a billion times. It's, it's amazing. This is like what the power of Docker and containers specifically is. You know, if you start building bigger services that start to scale when one of these servers goes down because they happen all the time what's going to happen is it's going to take the docker image that you have make a new instance of it in other words make a container and boom your, your application's back up it's really really cool and it has a lot of ginormous potential hopefully you got some stuff out of this i have more in the pipeline related to docker so make sure you subscribe to get everything on cfe.sh slash YouTube. We'll see you soon.